I thank the chair. And Mr. Zuckerberg, I know we both wish we met under a different set of circumstances. When the story broke, you were quoted saying, I started Facebook. I run it. I'm responsible for what happens here, end quote. You said those same words, your opening statement, about an hour and a half ago. I know you believe that in your heart. It's not just some talking point, some canned speech. Because my four years, five, I'm sorry, nine years in the Navy, I know the best commanding officers, the best skippers, the best CEOs have that exact same attitude. If Facebook was the Navy ship, your privacy has taken a direct hit. Your trust is severely damaged. You're taking on water, and your future may be a fine with a number per the Washington Post with four commas in it. Today, over a billion dollars in fines come your way. As you know, you have to reinforce your words with actions. A few questions about some anomalies that have happened in the past. First of all, back in 2012, apparently, Facebook did an experiment on 689,003 Facebook users. You reduced positive posts from users' friends and limited so-called data posts from other friends. Basically, you fed positive information to one group, another group, negative information. The goal was to see how the tone of these posts would affect behavior. I will get in this Forbes article, the LA Times, about unlegal, illegal human experimentation without permission. I want to talk about that. But it seems that this is disconnecting people. In stark contrast, your mission to connect people. Explain to us how you guys thought this idea was a good idea. Explain with people. Give them more negative information, positive information. Well, Congressman, I view our responsibility as not just building services that people like to use, but making sure that those services are also good for people and good for society overall. At the time, there were a number of questions about whether people seeing content that was either positive or negative on social networks was affecting their mood. And we felt like we had a responsibility to understand uh, whether that was the case, because we don't want to have that effect. Right? We, we don't want to have it so that we, we want use of social media and our products to be good for people's well-being. I mean, we continually make changes to, to that effect, um, including just recently, this year, we did a number of research uh, projects that showed that when social media is used for building relationships, so when you're interacting with people, um, it's associated with a lot of positive effects of, of well-being that you'd expect. It, it makes you feel more connected, less lonely. It correlates with long-term measures of happiness and health. Uh, whereas if you're using social media or the internet just to passively consume content, then that doesn't have those same positive effects or can even be negative. So we've tried to shift the product more towards helping people um, interact with friends and family as a result of that. So that's the kind of an example of the kind of work that we, that we do. Well, that's a question. I believe I've heard you employ 27,000 people thereabouts. Is that correct? Yes. I've also been told that about 20,000 of those people, including contractors, uh, do work on data security, is that correct? Yes, the 27,000 number is full-time employees, and the security and content review includes contractors, of which there are tens of thousands. Okay, so be, roughly at least half your practice. employees are dedicated to security practices. How can Cambridge Analytical happen with so much of your workforce dedicated to these causes? How'd that happen? Well, Congressman, the the issue with Cambridge Analytica and Alexander Kogan happened before we ramped those programs up dramatically. But one thing that I think is important to understand overall is just the sheer volume of content on Facebook makes it so that we can't, no amount of people that we can hire will be enough to review all of the content. We need to rely on and build um, sophisticated AI tools that can help us flag certain content. And we're getting good in certain areas. One of the areas that I mentioned earlier was um, terrorist content, for example, where we now have AI systems that can identify um, and, and take down 99% of the Al-Qaeda and ISIS-related content in our system before someone, uh, a human, even flags it to us. General